What is it? Hello, Mother. All right, Marion, come in. Mrs. Morgan speaking. Oh, just a minute, please. I'm going out to play a little bridge tonight. I thought perhaps you might like to spend the evening over at the Johnsons. You know I don't like to go over there. Well, I can't understand why you don't like Helen Johnson. She's swell. Her grandmother's a terrible pill. Why, well, she thinks Helen believes babies are found under cabbage leaves and stuff like that. Well, doesn't she? Oh, Mother. Please don't be so silly. Her grandmother does. Why, Mary. Mm, I may go with that. I don't want to spend the evening here all alone. So sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, the escort bureau. Yes, I did put in a call. I want a nice young man for a bridge party tonight. Hand me that date book quick. That Dizzy Morgan dame's on the line. Now, let's see who's available. Prince Dimitri. Too expensive. And the Duke. He's engaged for tonight. Our newest football hero. Not polished enough. Ah, here's the very one for her. Count Dehoven. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Morgan. I've got exactly what you want. Yes. Oh, you're sure he's educated and refined? You know, I didn't like the last one you sent me. What? A real count? Oh, that's fine. About 28? No, oh, that's just wonderful. Just about my age. Uh, I hope he plays bridge. He does? Okay, then have him report here about nine. In a dinner jacket. Yes, just a private little bridge party. Goodbye. Marion. Marion. Yes, Mother? Uh, would you take the phone out, dear? Oh, just a minute, Marion. You got your allowance yesterday, didn't you? Yes, why? I'm a little short, and I'd like to borrow part of it. Well, you got your alimony last week, didn't you? Yes, but I have so many expenses, and... Gigolos do come high, don't they? If you call an escort to a bridge party at Gigolo... Oh, never mind. I'll tell you what I'll do. You let me have some of the gang over tonight, and I'll split with you. I don't like that word gang, but if you'll invite a few of the nicer youngsters, I won't mind. Oh, I'll have nothing but the very nicest. I'll get the money. Hello, Beth? Say, listen, Mother's going out to play bridge tonight, and she'll be out way late. Call up Bill and come over about 9.30. Okay, watch for the signal. Bye. Hello, Helen? Meeting of the gang tonight at my house about 9.30. Ah, oh, come on. Even if you have to slide down the rain pipe. At a girl. And listen, bring your new costume so you can dance for us. Okay, I'll be expecting you. Bye. Hello, Harry? How are you, big boy? Say, listen, I'm having a few of the nicer youngsters over tonight. Are you nice? Oh, <laughs> I think you're even nicer than that. Oh, about 9.30. Park down the street and watch for the signal. Okay. Bye. What time is it, Harry? Oh, about 9.30, I guess. Well, guys, the coast ought to be clear by this time. Ah, uh, go on back to sleep or whatever you're doing. I'll tell you when it's time to come up for air. Harry, be careful where you put your hands. Oh, oh, getting prudish, huh? Gosh, no, darling. Sunburn. 
How do you like my long kisses, Beth? Give me another sample, honey, and I'll tell you in a half hour. Howdy, girl. Pucker up. Hey, you. You ain't allowed to park in the street and make googly eyes. Oh, gee, mister, when a fella has to goo, he just has to goo. Well, go on and get out of here. I might forget I was young myself once. And what was it, Danny? Just a couple of lovebirds. And why did you shoo them away? Because when a man wants to goo, he wants to goo. And I don't want any lovebirds perched that close when I'm gooing. Oh. Okay, folks, the party's on. Come out of it. Come out of it. With my Wait just a minute until I get straightened up. Let's go. Do I look all right? Oh, who cares? You wouldn't look natural if you weren't all messed up. Look who's talking. Game and rubber. Our turn to sit out, Count. Jane and Stuart. It's your turn to play. Come on. Oh, wait. Let's add up the score first. One play, Stuart? Yes. Oh, I suppose so, but I don't like bridge. My brother lost his wife playing bridge. You mean to say your brother bet his wife on a bridge game? No, she trumped his ace and he shot her. That'll never happen to you, you old woman hater. I'm not a woman hater. I'm just a happy bachelor. I should think lifelong bachelorhood would be pretty lonely. Oh, well, it was good enough for my father. I guess it's good enough for me. <laughs> Come on, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're better like next time. Let's go over here and have our drink. Yeah? <laughs> mm, I see Lucy has another boyfriend. I can't understand why she quit Joe. They say he was a marvelous husband and a terrific lover. Yes, he was, but not to the same woman. Well, what happened? Did he walk out on her? No, he walked in on her. Uh-oh. And they say Marion's a block of the old chip. Well. Thank goodness I don't have to worry about my Beth. She's a model youngster. <laughs> you lost, Beth. Off at one more piece. Oh, come on, Beth. <laughs> Do you like me, Harry? I got my costume along. Wait here and I'll go put it on. Swirl.
compelling. Come on, Helen. Come on, Helen. Let's go. salesman you introduced me to last week was certainly a high-pressure guy. Did he talk you into buying a car? No, he talked me to taking a ride in one. Did he propose? Yes, but not what you're thinking. One no trap. You lost again, Beth, so come on and give. <laughs> come on. No, no. It wouldn't take much to put you under the table, would it? No, just the sight of your husband coming through the door. <laughs> Silly boy. I haven't a husband. Anyway, I don't see why you should worry about a husband. You'd never give him any cause for complaint. What does it take to warm you up? Cocktails? No, just a nice girl. Well, don't you think I'm nice? Oh, very. Then, why are you so cold? After all, I was engaged as an escort. I'm supposed to play bridge, drink, dance, and be charming generally. But my agreement says nothing of throwing in love and necking. Gratis. Well, if you're going to be so mercenary about it, perhaps that could be arranged too. Oh, Lucy, Mrs. Morgan, you're in again. Oh dear, shall we go? This is your lucky night, my dear. You've won every rubber, haven't you? Lucky at cards, unlucky at love. <laughs> Then maybe I'd rather lose a rubber or two if it would help my love score. Oh, well, that can't be completely oh. hopeless. Honey's <laughs> <laughs> me. I feel rather guilty leaving Beth home alone. But then, of course, I couldn't bring her here to listen to all the smart stories and wise cracks. She's such a modest little mouse. <laughs> Come on, Beth. Don't be a piker. And make it snappy. We've got to straighten up this place, and you've all got to scram before Mother gets home. Come on, come on, come on, there <laughs> What makes you so grouchy tonight, Stuart? Oh, I'm not grouchy. It's just uh, melancholy. Melancholy? Oh, yes, every time I get liquored up, I always get all homesick for old Budway. Oh, come on, tell Mama all about it. Oh, I'm sad and melancholy. For the days that used to be For the gals and for the pals who were true blue For the lights of dear old Broadway For the gleam of old Times Square What I'd give to stroll once more Fifth Avenue But those days are gone forever and the pals have all gone too. The knowledge brings a teardrop to my eye. So I'm sad and melancholy, for I would rather be a bum on Broadway than an angel. I wish that fellow wouldn't be forever singing those corny songs.
Here we are. The dear child is waiting up for me. Isn't that sweet? Lovely. Marion. Marion. Oh, I didn't expect you to wait up for me, dear. Were you lonesome? Oh, no, Mother. Helen came over for a little while, and then I read until I was sleepy. You know, I just love to read. Of course, dear. Uh, Count, this is my baby. Marion, I want you to meet the Count de Hofen. How do you do? How do you do? I know you two are going to be very good friends. I'm sure of it. <laughs> now, you two just get acquainted, and I'll run along and get the Count a drink. An excellent idea. Faker. Faker yourself. Gigolo. Your sleep might have fooled your mother, but it didn't fool me. You see, I am an expert in such matters. And you better hide this a little more carefully. This must have been quite interesting. The pages are uncut. So what, Snooper? I suppose you'll have to tell Mother. I didn't, did I? Okay, then. You let me alone and I won't butt in on your little game. We'll be sort of friendly enemies. On the contrary. I'm sure we'll become very friendly, but not enemies. Here we are. A cocktail for you, Count. And one for me. And a glass of milk for Baby. On our better acquaintance. Yes, Count. To our better acquaintance. Oh, I think it is time to go home. And thank you for a very delightful evening. Oh, must you leave so soon? Won't you sit down and relax a little while? <laughs> it is rather late and Baby is so tired and sleepy. Uh, yes, it's way past baby's bedtime. Uh, just sit down and I'll go and tuck her into bed. Come, baby. Good night, uh, baby. Why do you always have to be in the way? Why hadn't you gone to bed? I do sort of cramp your style, don't I? Well, let me tell you something. If you ever pull that baby stuff again, I'll blow my top of plenty. Why can't you get married and have a home of your own? Because I've never found a man I'd want to marry. The ones who would make good family men are so dumb I couldn't stand them. The ones I like are so worthless I'd starve. Well, I hope you find one pretty soon. But so do I, darling. I'm just as sick of you as you are of me. Well, you've got me all tucked in nice and cozy now. So go on back to your count. The faker. How dare you say... Gee, it's raining. I better be getting in. Yeah, I guess you're right. It is getting kind of late. Well, I'll drive you around to the front of the house. No, you better not. We might be seen. I'll just get to the girl. Okay, but I'll wait until I'm sure you're in. Good night. Good night, dear.
Helen. Helen. Yes, Grandma? What do you want? What was that noise I heard? I didn't hear any noise. Wind howling, door slamming. What? I declare our body thinks this house is haunted. Why, child, your face is all wet. Are you sick? Oh, no, Granny. I was just too warm a while ago. You don't feel feverish. Now keep covered up good and warm so you won't catch cold. Good night, Granny. Good night. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he is a real count after all. You've got to realize that I'm running a business. And I can't afford to have my employees get temperamental. They've got to take the jobs as they come. I tell you, this woman is impossible. I really believe she's getting serious. I've been up with her four times now, and every time she's tried to make it a love affair. Well, Mrs. Morgan is one of our best customers, and she definitely demands you. There are particular reasons why I don't want to go up with her anymore. All the same, we've got to do what we can to satisfy our clients. So you give her a ring this afternoon, if you want to work for me. But you don't know this dame. She's dynamite. Dynamite or not, her money's good, isn't it? Anyhow, you're young and healthy. I don't think a little necky more or less will hurt you. Give her a ring when you get home. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello. Well, sure I remember you. You're the gigolo. Well, Mother's not at home. What? Me? You want a date with me? Why, my dear Count, I can't afford paid escorts. But I'm asking you for a date socially, not professionally. My intentions? Strictly dishonorable, I assure you. All right. I'll call your bluff, but on my own terms. Some of my gang are going down to the Lago Conga Cafe tonight for a jam session. All those jitterbugs will be swinging it to that Killadella marimba band. And you can go with me if you like. Ah, oh, don't be an icky. You look all right. All right. I'll, uh, uh, what is it you say, uh, call your bluff. It's a date. Baker. Okay, Gigolo. It's a date. Better not pick me up here. I'll meet you at the cafe at 9.30. Bye. Who were you talking to, Marion? Oh, just one of the gang. Mother, are you going to use the car tonight? No, why? Well, I was just wondering if I could have it. Yes, I'm going to stay in this evening. I'm expecting the Count to drop by. The Count? Oh, you mean the gigolo. Marion, I wish you wouldn't speak so disrespectfully of my friends. After all, he may be one of the family someday. Why, Mother, how nice. Are you sure your intentions are honorable? 
Or could they by any chance be strictly dishonorable? But I suppose that's necessary in your profession. Oh, absolutely. Aren't you a little bit ashamed to sell yourself to women? Not exactly, although I'm not very proud of it. But tell me, would you like me better if I were a bond salesman? Why, yes, of course. Do you think it more honorable to sell worthless stocks and bonds to silly women than to sell them companionship and pleasure? Well, I never thought of it that way. As a matter of fact, I don't think you are a very deep thinker on any subject. Why don't you two call off the war for a while? An excellent idea. I'm only fighting a defensive battle. I can't see how Helen can be so careless, leaving the window unfastened so often. Helen! Helen! From Arrigo, we present to you the Pompa Trio, giving you their interpretation of the Mexican clog dance. But don't go away, folks. Immediately following this number, we have a grand surprise for you. The Pompa Trio. Let's give them a big hand. For your very special entertainment, we will present for the first time on any stage a real genuine bullfight featuring the world's greatest matador, 
direct from a triumphal tour of all the bull rings in Spain, in his thrilling, death-defying duel with two, not one, but two bulls, Jose Gonzalez. <laughs> concludes our performance. Now let's all dance and be merry with Cheeto and his orchestra. Take it away, Cheeto.
He is our better acquaintance. And hoping that you will learn to understand me better. like Mary has gone overboard. She doesn't stand her looking like Grandma's little pet, does she? I think it is time I took her home. Okay, we'll go along with you. I can handle her very well myself, thank you. But gee whiz, Count, I would... You need not worry. In my country, gentlemen may hunt big or dangerous game. They never shoot tame pigeons. And I am a gentleman. Come on, Harry. She's safe with the Count. It's getting awfully late and I've got to be getting in myself. Okay, but I don't like it. Come on. You passed out, so I brought you to my apartment. So that's the scenario of this play. Helpless heroine in villain's apartment. What's next? You just lie back and relax. You're going all right. Nothing like black coffee to clear one's head. A cup of this and I can safely take you home. Take me home? Why, of course. What else did you expect? And you're not going to try to take advantage of me or anything like that? Most certainly not. There must be something wrong with the script. Are you disappointed or pleased? Well, I don't exactly know. But I must admit I had you figured out all wrong. a bit a while ago. What are you doing here? When I got home, my window was locked. I peeked in and there sat grandmother waiting up for me. I didn't dare go in, so I came here to spend the night. What happened to you? Nothing. Just nothing at all. Count gave me coffee and brought me home. But what'll your grandmother say when you go home tomorrow? I'm not going home. Not going home? No, because if I do, she'll send me back to my uncle's farm in Iowa. And I won't ever go there again. <laughs> it can't be as bad as that in Iowa. Oh, you don't know. You can't understand. The tall corn, the mooing cows, and the hicks, the worst of all the hicks. Pawing and mussing you and trying to act like city slickers. What are you going to do? I'm going to run away and get married. Run away and get married? Why? You don't know anyone outside of this city. Yes, I do. I met him by correspondence through the Elite Correspondence Club. 
Oh, I'm so thrilled at the thought of having a home of my own. I've wanted to go for a long time. But are you sure it's safe? Oh, of course. He writes the loveliest letters. Say, you didn't tell Mother I was out the count, did you? Oh, no. She didn't ask. Gee, I'm glad of that. If she knew, I might be losing my happy home. I'll tell you what, Marion. What? When I'm all settled, I'll write you and you can come and pay me a good long visit. That might not be such a hard idea. If your boyfriend's so nice, I might try to steal him. I'll take a chance. Okay, but remember, I warned you. Come on, let's go to bed. <laughs> enjoyed my diary. You can hardly expect me to enjoy learning that I've been betrayed by my own daughter. Don't be so tragic, Mother. You meant nothing to the Count, or he to you. You know he meant everything to me, and yet you deliberately came between us. You ought to realize, Mother, that you're no longer attractive to young men. You had your day, 
So why don't you stop trying to fool yourself? I won't give up. I won't. I don't want to grow old. I want some of the good things of life I was cheated out of by a loveless marriage. I'm sorry, Mother. I didn't know you felt so badly about it. I've always resented you. I never wanted you in the first place. And now you try to destroy my happiness. We're both upset. Perhaps you'd feel better if I went away for a little while, until we both get settled down a bit. Yes, that's a very good idea. You go to your father. He always wanted you. No. No, I can't go to him. I might cause trouble with his new wife. I'll go and visit Helen. I got a letter from her the other day inviting me. This is the address you gave me, 1066 River Street. You sure you want to go in there, lady? Of course, why not? Well, that's your business, not mine. That'll be 50 cents, please. for a girl named Helen. Mrs. Helen Bowen. Who? Mrs. Helen Bowen. Oh, what is it, Pearl? There's a girl here says she's looking for Mrs. Helen Bowen, ma'am. Oh, yes, of course. Come right in. Take care of her case, Pearl. There's something screwy here. That gal didn't look that tight to me. But, Helen, where is she? Right down this way, honey. But here, we call her Maisie. Tray there. Well, have you come to your senses? I'll never do what you want me to. You little fool, I'll give you one more day to change your mind. Then I'm going to start working on you. You wouldn't dare. No, I would have done it before now, only I didn't want to bruise you up. I'm saving you for a very special customer. When my father learns of Neither this... Neither your father nor anyone else you respect will ever see you again. And in a couple of months... You'd die rather than have them even find you. You talk to her, Maisie. Please don't hate me, Marion. I never thought you'd come. They found your picture in my things and well, they beat me and threatened to kill me if I didn't ride. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Helen. But we've got to figure out some way to get out of here. I've tried every way. But they watch every move. But your husband. I haven't any husband. That man was only an agent for this place. You mean to tell me that you let your daughter go and visit Helen without even knowing where she lives? Well, yes. She said she'd write in a few days. But all we know about Helen is that she ran away to marry a man she had never seen. A man she met through a matrimonial agency advertisement. Yes, I... I guess that is so. Don't you know that some of those agencies are the worst kind of traps? That many of the customers are criminals, morons, white slavers, or people who are mentally or physically diseased? Oh, I've never given it a thought. 
Oh, you American mothers, with your bridge parties and beauty shops and your silly flirtations, wasting your lives and neglecting your duties, letting your children run wild for lack of sensible parental supervision. Oh, you don't know American children. They're spoiled and disobedient and drunken. Drunken? Yes. Drunk with the exuberance of youth and sheer joy of living. There's nothing really wrong with the children of today. Nothing that proper environment and congenial home life wouldn't correct. What do you expect us modern mothers to do? Quit trying to be butterflies. Get back to the business of being mothers, like your mother and your grandmother, and generations of mothers before them. A lesson in morals and ethics is fine coming from you. A professional gigolo. That's all changed now. I have found a real job. And I've worked long enough to know that I can hold it and earn an honest living. Well, that's all very interesting. But I don't see that it concerns me. But it does concern you. I'm going to marry your daughter. Well, I'm not so sure I approve of that. But we have got to find her. Can't you think of some way to trace her? I don't know. I... Perhaps a letter. Here's an old blubber. Have you got a mirror handy? Well, yes, I'll get one. I think I've got it. Look. Mrs. Helen Bowen, 1066 River Street, Pittsburgh. Bowen? That's the name of the man Helen ran away to marry. Yes, that's the name Marion told me. Pittsburgh is an overnight trip by train. I'll fly her this afternoon. If I find her, I'll wire you. What kind of a place is this? Well, you look like you've been around, mister. You ought to know. So that's it, huh? Class, brother. Class. How much do they owe you? Two bucks. Better stick around. I may need you. Well, that'll cost you money, you know. I gotta keep the meter running. Let it run. Have you ever been here before, sir? No. A friend gave me the address just tonight. Then there's no particular lady you'd like to see? No. Oh, wait a minute. Haven't you got a new girl here by the name of Helen? Helen? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only we call her Maisie here. And Madam just told me the other day her real name is Helen. I'd like to see her. Yes, sir. Just have a seat a minute and I'll send her right in. Gee, this is a dull night. Hardly any business at all. Besides, that new girl Maisie's getting all the business there is. Come in the parlor to see you, Miss Maisie. Interesting auntie, isn't it? How? Betty, Helen, what are you doing in this place? I was brought here by a man I thought was going to marry me. Well, the whole thing was a fade. Yes, and then? And then, well, you can see what happened to me. And yet you sent for Miriam. They made me. They found her picture and beat me. I'm weak. 
I gave in and wrote to her. Where's she? They got her locked up in the room next to mine. They haven't broken her yet. Show me the room. Then get your things quick and be ready for a getaway. You can't do it, Count. Or they'd kill you. Do as I tell you. Miss Maisie? What you all doing, Miss Maisie? I was just admiring this suit of armor. I'm rather a connoisseur of such things, you know. Oh, yes, sir. You sure is. Shall we go? Cono. Sure. Man, that is a five dollar wood. This is my room. That's Marion's. I'll give you a moment and I'll break in the door. Don't wait for me. I'm not fit to go with you now. Oh, stop arguing. I'm going to take you both out of here. Never mind your things. Come quickly. What's all the rumpus? I don't know. Pearl yell for it, so here we are. Just a minute. Where are you going? Get out of my way. going on up there. Oh boy, oh boy. I think he needs me now. We won the fight, didn't we? Sure enough, we did. Can you get us out of here? Just leave it to me, pal. Just leave it to me. Then get in. Let's go before the police arrive. Oh, boy. Did we take them guys or did we take them? Oh, Count. I'm so glad you came. Don't call me Count, Marion. All that stuff is behind me. I'm plain Mr. Lehoven, American citizen. American citizen? Yes, I got my American citizenship papers yesterday, and I've got a job. You get married, and you can live like self-respecting, self-supporting Americans should. I knew she wasn't a type. Hello. Oh, hello. Here's that Morgan woman again. Hand me the book. Hello? Yes, this is Miss Morgan. I'd like an escort for this evening. Oh, a nice young college type. About 27 or 28. About my own age, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 